Hidden within the towering, snow-draped slopes of Mount Rainier lies a world that few have dared to enter. To uncover its secrets, we must dive into the stories of the brave explorers and scientists who risked everything just for a look inside this magnificent and deadly world. It is a place of breathtaking beauty and unimaginable danger, a labyrinth of ice caves where the walls shimmer like crystal but every step could be your last. These caves, set inside an active volcano, are as deadly as they are mesmerizing. Roofs collapse without warning, and lethal levels of carbon dioxide seep through the air. But how do these captivating, deadly caves form? And most importantly, what drives people to risk it all and explore them? Well, let's take a trip inside and see what all this is about. The ice caves are born from a delicate balance of glacial meltwater and volcanic heat. Mount Rainier has 28 major glaciers on it. And let's not forget, Mount Rainier is not just a mountain, it is also a volcano, and one that remains quietly active. As a volcano, Mount Rainier generates heat, and this heat seeps upward through the rock and into the overlying glacier. This heat melts the glacier ice from below, creating pockets of meltwater that then begin carving paths through the ice. At the same time, surface melt from warmer seasons contributes additional water, which flows downward and further erodes the glacial interior. So it's not so much like heat is just blasting through the glacier creating all these tunnels. It's more like heat melts the glacier in certain places and creates all this meltwater. And it is this meltwater that runs through the glacier and carves out the tunnels. The flowing meltwater acts like a natural sculpture, widening and smoothing tunnels within the glacier. Meanwhile, the cold air inside the caves freezes any excess water, reinforcing some parts of the cave while leaving others thin and brittle. The result is a dynamic, ever-changing structure where new tunnels form as old ones collapse. Now, what makes these caves exceptionally unique is the combination of geothermal heat and seasonal melting. While ice caves in other parts of the world are formed solely by surface melt, the presence of volcanic heat at Mount Rainier creates a more complex and unpredictable environment. This dual process ensures that no two seasons produce the same caves, and it also is what makes Mount Rainier pretty darn unique. Now let's talk about the thing that made me want to make this video in the first place, and that is this photo right here. One of the most iconic images of these ice caves is the legendary rainbow photo. Taken at the entrance of one such cave, the photograph captures a perfect arch of vibrant color hovering above the icy threshold. This stunning effect is caused by a combination of natural phenomena. Some of the reddish hues come from the red-colored algae that thrives on the cave surface. But most of the color comes from the dense glacier ice, scattering the sunlight that's coming through it. This phenomenon, called Rayleigh scattering, is the same thing that makes the sky appear blue, sunset so colorful, and also the same that produces rainbows. Alright, now that we've talked about all the cool stuff, no pun intended, let's get to talking about the dangers lurking within these caves. As I said, these frozen tunnels exist in a constant state of flux, melting and collapsing without notice. The very forces that create them, the seasonal and volcanic heat, is also exactly what makes them so deadly. Volcanic heat softens the ice from below, while warm summer air weakens it from above. Entire sections of the caves can collapse, crushing anything beneath. So that's not exactly ideal if you're inside exploring. But structural instability isn't the only danger here. The atmosphere inside these caves can be lethally hazardous too. Volcanic gases from Mount Rainier's volcanic activity release high levels of carbon dioxide into the cave system. In some areas, CO2 levels have been measured at up to 24.8%, far exceeding what is considered safe, a much smaller 0.5%. And because I know you're wondering, 4% is considered lethal. These elevated levels of carbon dioxide can cause asphyxiation for anyone inside. Hypothermia is also another ever-present threat. The combination of freezing air and icy meltwater can quickly sap away body heat. So no, the heat of a volcano will not keep you warm in the air, apparently it'll just release a bunch of gas and kill you, so that's nice, I guess. Now if you're like me at this point, you might be asking, Dina, if the volcanic heat is what forms the ice caves, then how can they be so cold? Well, remember that I said the caves are formed not so much from the heat, 
but from the meltwater that the heat causes. In other words, it all comes down to the water and how it travels. As you probably know, ice is colder than water, and so when you run water over ice, it melts the ice. But the important thing here to remember is that, especially with the volcanic heat, the temperature is only high enough to melt the glacier in very localized areas. These are places deep within the glacier where the volcanic heat becomes trapped and concentrated, or maybe towards the surface where the warming air temperatures can reach it. Either way, it's only hot in a very specific part, not all through the caves. This water carries a small amount of heat and consequently melts the ice that it travels through. This forms the incredible and dangerous ice caves of Mount Rainier. But as dangerous as they are, there is no denying that these ice caves are beautiful. I just think I'll stick to looking at photos of them instead of going inside. Plus, there are so many ice caves in the world that are significantly safer to visit than this one. Speaking of beautiful and terrifying worlds, Yellowstone National Park is situated on a massive supervolcano that is both visually gorgeous and also kind of terrifying. And you may not know that this gorgeous and terrifying place sort of does the impossible. If you're curious to know what the heck I'm talking about, go ahead and watch my video right here. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.